So this, uh, like as we discussed just uh, now, there are two approaches for data warehouse development, top down and bottom up approach. So when we use a top down approach, when we use bottom up approach, and when we go for hybrid, means combination of both approaches. So the hybrid approach has become uh, like in most of the development, we go for hybrid approach. So what is this hybrid approach that we discuss? Then, means we discuss about what is the data warehouse. So definition of the data warehouse, which makes uh, very clear what is the data warehouse exactly. So, like most of the time, uh, people get confused. Then, my OLDP system database is kept in Oracle database. My data warehouse is kept in Oracle database. So, where is the difference? So, that is very common question and very genuine question. When both the things are in the same uh, uh, system, then why do I require uh, two different type of databases? So to understand very clearly, like uh, here I take the example, what is the difference between old DB database and warehouse database? So there are about uh, 12, 13 points are there, which makes it very clear about uh, why these two databases are different and why these two databases cannot be combined together as a single database. So these we discuss. Then what is a data mart? So we are talking about data marts. As I said, like you see this. Data mart is a data warehouse for a specific domain. So data mart and data warehouse both are same. The only difference is the scope of the data. Then when we are talking about this uh, independent data mart or dependent data mart, what is the meaning? So it is like a top down approach or bottom up approach. So first we develop the data mod and then we develop the data warehouse, that is the bottom of approach. Or we say, no, let us develop the data warehouse first and then we develop the data mod, then it is a bottom, uh, top down approach. So the question is like, uh, how we decide, should we go for top down approach or should we go for bottom approach? Then what is the advantages of both approach, what are the disadvantages? So all these things we discuss. Then. Uh, Staging database. So apart from OLDP database and uh, data warehouse and data mart, do we need some other databases? So answer is yes. One of the database is uh, referred as a staging database. So what is the use of staging database and why we require? So that we discuss. Then there is one more database which comes uh, occasionally or it comes uh, or it is used which is an operational data store. So that also we discuss. Why do we require operational data store? So like in a very brief uh, I tell some of the clients they started demanding, we have OLTP database, we have a data warehouse. Data warehouse is used for uh, analytical purpose as well as for reporting. But in the data warehouse, we don't keep the transactional data, mostly we keep the summary data. So the client, some of the clients they say that, is it possible to provide transactional reporting also from the warehouse database? So it is like, uh, if they want to switch off, complete operational reporting from OLTP database to warehouse database. But warehouse database basically is to keep the summarized data. It does not keep the detailed data. So suppose if we start keeping the detailed data along with the summarized data, then data warehouse becomes very large. And it becomes sometimes unmanageable. And performance becomes very slow. So then came with the new concept like, let us introduce one more database at the warehouse side. So it is referred as an operational data store, which keeps the detailed data to support operational reporting and based on this uh, operational data, build your data warehouse and data mart, which is for the uh, analytical reporting or uh, like this is a making based reporting. So this is again, is a separate uh, database which may be required if the client is very much interested to shift uh, all the operational reporting data warehouse side. Yeah. So, if we have the ODS, then we are adding one more the database there then. The ODS itself is a database. Yes. So, in that sense, we have a source, stage, ODS, and data mart. Yeah, data mart and data warehouse. So, yeah. so means that uh, the data are in different place. So, how ODS would help? So basically what ODS does is uh, suppose your OLTP system are available at so many different places. So we extract the data from there. First we will keep it stating because as I said earlier your OLTP system or source data might not be available at the same point of time. So our approach is uh, whenever data are available extract them keep in staging so that 
it becomes a single source of data, but we don't do any transformation there. From the staging data, we extract the data and keep into ODS. Now, when we go for ODS, what we do is we make a complete uh, data structure. Again, we use the ER data modeling. So, as I said, that OLTP level, you have some data under RDBMS based on the ER data modeling. Some data might be under file system. So, ODS is one the database which provides all the OLTP data <coughs> in one single format, which is based on ER modeling. So, it is like a transactional data <coughs> in a very well structured format at a single location and very transformed data. So, it may be possible that at the OLTP level, some customers have uh, given uh, partial data, some customers have given complete data. So, OLTP means ODS level, what we try to do is uh, make all this data as complete as possible in a very proper structure, so that uh, reporting becomes much easier compared to reporting on the OLTP system. So, it is like ODS is an integrated transaction data. In a very simple sentence, we can say, ODS is integrated transactional data. So, reporting becomes much easier from there. And from old ODS, now you are getting a complete data, which is in a well uh, formatted approach. Then building your data warehouse and data mod also becomes uh, much easier. So, your ideal process uh, does not require a lot of transformation, because some of the transformation is already done between the staging data and ODS. So, it is like your transformation is uh, simplified for warehouse and data mod because of ODS. But here the, the purpose of tracking the history data will not be there, right? In uh, ODS? Yes. It is there. Like in ODS generally what we do is uh, we keep uh, not only one year data, generally we try to keep uh, like uh, two or three times uh, more data from the past. Suppose your OLTP system is keeping your one year data, one financial year data. So, in ODS we try to keep for two or three financial year data. Because in most of the companies, like if you take the banking example, we, we go for bank statements. So, sometimes we ask for only three months, six months bank statement. But sometimes the requirement may be like, okay, give me two years or three years. So, generally that kind of uh, data we keep. So, ODS will keep uh, some more data compared to your OLTP system. So, generally two to three uh, financial year data will keep, but not uh, as much as uh, required by the warehouse. Like in warehouse, we might keep 10 years, 20 years data, but that much data we don't keep in ODS. Maybe one or two or three financial year data will be there. And this is like a very basic uh, architecture, like uh, in the very starting of the data warehousing solution, like about 15 years, 20 years back. Data browsing was uh, in the very initial stage, so it was like uh, sources, data browse, and then OLAP tool, reporting and OLAP tool. So there was no data mod, all those things. But gradually, when the requirement is starting uh, growing, then we find, okay, sources are becoming very complex, and they are very isolated, distributed, so it is not possible to extract at a time. So they introduce, okay, take the staging integrate them from uh, multiple sources and then build a data warehouse. Then after that, they realize only data warehouse is not enough because data warehouse, every user, every management user is working top level, middle level. So it was like uh, people who are in the particular division of the company, they said that why should I connect to this uh, big data warehouse and basically I need to analyze within five years but it takes half an hour or one hour. So then we started splitting them into as per their requirements. So data mass came into existence. So like this, this uh, architecture is evolved over the period of time. So today when we are talking about, we are talking about data sources, we are talking about the staging, we are talking about ODS, we are talking about data mass and warehouse, or warehouse and data mass. So five or six uh, different level of uh, databases we are using right now. After this, uh, we discuss about like what is the data modeling approach, what is the ER modeling, what is the dimensional modeling. So as I said, like uh, as an ETL developer, you don't need to be a, a data modeler, but you need to understand the data models. So what is the ER data model? So we discuss like what is the entity, what is the relation, what is the type of relation, one to one, one to many, many to many. How RDS handles many to many relations? How the tables relation is defined? What is the meaning of diagram in ER model, like we are using the lines. 
profit, what is the meaning of this, how we define one to many relation through the data. So all these things we need to know as the ETL developer. So we discuss about this dimension modeling and uh, like different type of dimension modeling. So this uh, different type of dimension modeling approach is there. Out of this uh, star schema is the most popular dimension modeling. So that we discuss. But uh, apart from star schema, we discuss about the other dimension modeling which I will show you. Like we have a star schema model, a star flake, a snowflake, galaxy model. So all these things are like what is the star schema, what is the fact table, what is the dimension level, how the fact tables, dimension tables are related to each other, what, what should be the structure of dimension table, what are the columns which are compulsory for each and every dimension table irrespective of their subject. So these things uh, we discuss, this is the, the snowflake, this is the galaxy. So this is like uh, I was talking about this uh, dimension model. Yes, sir, before I actually uh, next interrupt here. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, with the emerging of uh, big data, we yeah. need the ETL position here. See, what is the big data? First, uh, we need to understand. Basically, uh, till now, within the data was we kept very structured data. It was like uh, textual data, numeric data, date type of data. But this uh, whatever data we are keeping in the data browse as of now, it is just 20% of uh, actual data which is available in our uh, real environment. Apart from this data, means well formatted structured data, there are so many unstructured data like uh, audio, video, image, all these are there. But these data are not structured data. So today, most of the clients are demanding uh, is it possible to keep all these data like audio data, video data, image, all those things within data browse and can we perform analysis based on this also. So because of this uh, requirement, a specific requirement of the clients and the things how the real time is available. So they said that okay, why don't you keep uh, these kind of data also in warehouse so that it is a single source of uh, complete data. So this uh, structured data plus all these unstructured data combined together is referred as a big data. So when we are going to the ETL tool, most of the ETL tools they have upgraded themselves to tackle this uh, unstructured data also like uh, audio video. So it is like if you give them audio file, from the audio file they will be able to read the data and keep in the textual format or whatever structure we require. If you give them video, from the video, they capture the image and based on the image, they can uh, find out the location or they can identify the person or whatever is there. So within Informatica also, they have come out with uh, another version of Informatica which deals with the big data. So they refer as a Informatica with big data. So it is a different version of Informatica. So the client of people who are looking for uh, a structured as well as uh, unstructured data they take that informatica for big data, which is based on Hadoop language. So when we are dealing with the uh, big data, basically one uh, programming language is there, which is referred as Hadoop. And informatica has uh, integrated Hadoop within their own version. So now these detailed tools are taking care of this big data also. So you want to ask that this version as well? So in this, uh, like in this, uh, session we are not going to cover that big data in a very big day. One or two examples will be there but will not be covered in a very depth because that itself is a very different. So if you want to go in big data, first you need to learn the Hadoop language and until that Hadoop language is uh, completed, you cannot work with the big data. ETL tool itself uh, does not provide a method to deal with the uh, unstructured data. So you have to take the help of Hadoop language. So what Informatica does? They integrate Hadoop language within their tool, but ultimately you have to write the complete uh, logic using the Hadoop language. So they have already done that, right? They have a new new release for this. Yeah, there is a new release. This that is a different release. So I was talking about this like uh, once we complete this uh, data modeling, means what are these slowly changing dimension? All those things we discussed. So these are like your theory part. Once our uh, theoretical part is over, then we go with the Informatica tool. So within Informatica tool, basically we discuss about, so I'm just showing you the PPD, 
what are the things we cover. Like see this Informatica Power Center for Big Data. So this is one uh, which is based on the Hadoop language. So here it is. So anyone who wants to go at the Big Data, he has to learn the Hadoop part. So then we discuss about like Informatica Power Center component, like it is based on client server architecture and also it is, uh, so what is the client server, what is the architecture of Informatica, all those things we, so here like we discuss in the very simple approach, what is the repository, Informatica repository service, how the different front end tools that deal with the repository service, so what is the integration service, what are the tools, uh, client tools they interact with the integration service. All these things we discuss. So when we discuss about Informatica, like what is a domain node, gateway node. So basically all this part of Informatica architecture. So once, like we take a two sessions for architecture, because uh, as an ETL developer, you don't need to work as an administrator, but again, the basic, okay, Chandu, is fine. So it is like a basic uh, architecture part you need to understand, not from the administrator point of view, but from uh, understanding point of view. And after that we start our uh, like, we have uh, means another PPT is there where we go for like designer. So here we discuss about what is the transformations, different type of transformations, active passive. So these are like uh, generally we cover about uh, 20 transformations within this uh, in in informatica course. So once this uh, is done, then we start practical. And uh, practically, what we do is like uh, each and every example I demonstrate uh, using informatica on my desktop. Plus, uh, you have an audio recording of which is given to you. Means audio video recordings there which is given to you. Suppose if something you are not able to understand during the session. You can see those videos and you can understand. And finally, at the during the course, I give some assignments, like whatever uh, transformations I think we cover. Based on that, I keep giving some small assignments. At the end of the course, we take one complete example of a cube, like five dimension table with one frac table, and how we implement the dimension table and frac table in the real environment. So that I demonstrate practically. Yes, yes, it will be emailed to you soon. So like every session, the file will be recorded, means it will be created and will be sent to you maybe on the same day or next day. So once uh, this session is over, then uh, means at the end of the session, I demonstrate one complete uh, cube of five dimension and fact table practically the way it is implemented in the project so that you have ideas. When you do the uh, practical in Informatica during the course, the kind of mapping you do and how you do in the project, so that difference you can understand. So generally what happens when we do the course, we try to understand the things conceptually and logically. But when we go to the project level, then the same kind of mapping which we have done at the practice level, you will find that actual level, it is a three or four times more complex than what we do during the courses. So that I demonstrate. So these are the like uh, flow how we are going to complete our session. So if you have any query, any doubts, you can ask.